Hello and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at reversible reactions and importantly we're going to be looking at definition and some fairly simple examples. By the end of today's session you should be able to do the following. Number one, you should be able to describe and identify reversible reactions, recall some simple reversible reactions, and recall the meaning of endothermic and exothermic reactions. So, let's get on and have a look. First question then, what is a reversible reaction? We've seen this sort of example of a reaction before when we've looked at rates of reaction. Here we've got some reactants on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have some products and we could describe this reaction simply as AB plus the green atom C going to make a molecule AC plus the atom B. Now the single arrow identifies this as a one-way process and the reactants fully go and form the products. However, a reversible reaction is one where the products of the reaction can themselves react to produce the original reactants. So if we look here at example 2, after example 1 here, we have our reactants again on the left hand side. They can go and form the products, but the products can then react again and they can go back and make the reactants. We show a reversible reaction with the double headed arrow. which it defines it as reversible. So here, the double-headed arrow, which I'm just going to circle in red, shows the reaction is reversible. Now let's have a look at some simple examples that we commonly come across in, certainly our IGCSE course, of some simple reversible reactions. Number one here, We've got a blue substance in a container and that is going to be heated and that substance is going to turn white and then if we go in the other direction if we add water that substance will turn blue. Perhaps you can guess what that is. I'll give you a couple of seconds. That's right. This is an example of copper sulfate which is being heated in the first instance from blue copper sulfate to form copper sulfate and water. And this copper sulfate on the right hand side is white. Now that can be reversed by adding water in, and it goes back the other direction. If we write this as a symbol equation, copper sulfate on the left-hand side we describe as hydrated. That means it's got water associated with each of the copper sulfates, which we show with this dot and the number of waters per copper sulfate. And I'm going to use a double-headed arrow this time to show it's reversible to form anhydrous without water. So anhydrous, no water, and the water is driven off, heated off. Now, if we heat something up, we are putting energy into the system. So this we describe as an endothermic reaction, and we'll come back to that later. So endothermic is putting energy in, the reverse reaction is releasing energy, we describe that as exothermic. So there we'll see examples of this in class, but copper sulphate blue 
when heated goes to copper sulfate white plus water and remember here we got hydrated copper sulfate and here we got anhydrous without water so our second example is that of ammonium chloride when heated will go to form ammonia gas and hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride in fact because it's not dissolved in water hydrogen chloride and give a simple equation here ammonium chloride is NH4 the ammonium ion Cl minus is the chloride and we go and form NH3 plus HCl importantly the ammonium chloride is a solid and the ammonia is a gas and the hydrochloric hydrogen chloride sorry is a gas we can see a demonstration or at least a picture here of the reaction and we can see we're heating it so ammonium chloride going to make ammonia and hydrochloric is that endothermic or exothermic that's right it's taking energy in so endothermic from left to right and from right to left if it was going in the other direction is exothermic so finally in this video we're just going to look at our definitions here of exothermic and endothermic reactions what do we mean well first of all we're going to look at what happens when molecules are broken or formed so if we break a bond for example if we had chlorine Cl2 if we wanted to make two chlorine atoms would that require us to put in energy or take out energy well that would require energy because we've got to break that bond a bit like breaking a stick we've got to put energy in so that reaction we describe as endothermic breaking bonds what about forming bonds so let's look at the reverse of that reaction perhaps two chlorine atoms going to make a chlorine molecule is that going to give out or take in energy that's right the bond forming is importantly giving out energy which we describe as exothermic so a reaction in total is a description of the bonds broken compared to the bonds formed and the difference between those two things. If it takes more energy to break all the bonds, then we get out from forming all the bonds, the reaction is endothermic. But if we get more energy out from forming all the bonds, then we put in for breaking the bonds, the reaction is exothermic. And we'll look at that in more detail later on. So, an exothermic reaction I'll do this in red. Is one which overall gives out energy or energy is transferred to the surroundings. And that is given out in the form of heat and is observed as a temperature rise
while an endothermic reaction is one which takes in energy from its surroundings. usually in the form of heat and hence we normally observe this as a fall or decrease in temperature. And there's our key definitions for endothermic and exothermic reactions. So that comes to the end of our lesson. We'll have a quick overview now just to see what we should have recalled from today's session. So just a reminder, we've looked at reversible reactions, some definition examples, and by now you should be able to, in written notes on, describe and identify reversible reactions, recall some simple reversible reactions, those were of ammonium chloride and copper sulfate, and of course recall the meaning of endothermic and exothermic reactions that we saw at the end. Okay, I shall see you soon. Bye for now.